Well, I, hello everybody, and welcome to Shenanigans. How are you guys all doing today? Great, doing good. Excellent. Um, Greg is going to be our DM for today, so I'm going to give him the chair and all let right. him run and everything. Awesome. Well, let's start off Shenanigans as we always do by going around and telling everybody, all the fine folks, what, who we are, what we're doing. So uh, let's start uh, to my right here in the cameras. Uh, Simon, what have you been up to? Tell us a little bit about what's going on. What's been going on with, with me personally? Yeah. Well, it's been a long time since I was on Shenanigans now. Uh, but I mostly just been working, really. Uh, the time difference didn't really work out for me beforehand, but... Now we'll get a new time slot. Uh, I can start playing again. It's really nice. Um, otherwise, just been the usual. Been playing a lot of 5th uh, edition and DMing 5th edition, pretty much. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, very cool. I really like 5th edition. It should be it should be a fun fun little system when we get the tweaks worked out of it. How about you, Nick? What have you been up to since you were last on here? Uh, well, at my job, we were assigned a project to basically go through every single account and make sure all the delivery and billing addresses match up with uh, USPS like standards. And it's just a mess because apparently there have been like zone changes. Some people used to be in this town and now they have to be changed to this town. And it's it's a pain in the butt. So addresses are a pain in the I'm ass. Glad it's the weekend. And when they updated all the zip really? codes, oh my god! Most, mm, yeah. Do you have yeah, to use the the newer, longer zip codes? But other than that, no. Like, what's the worst part is last year. Apparently, they did like just the opposite. Like everything like the road they want shortened to rd but last year they wanted rd actually written out as road so they took all summer last year to do this entire project and now it's going back that sounds like a bitch yeah it is it's a real one but other than that i've been good and my character is Sparky, the wild mage who only casts Nahal's Reckless Dreamer. Nice. That should be a load of fun. All right. So that's about it. Nice. Okay. Max, what's <laughs> up with you? How have you been? Who are you playing? Yeah, I'm um, been doing well. I'm trying to find a new um, place to live because I have to move out pretty much soon and it's pretty hard to find a place in Copenhagen. Mm. It's like every day I'm checking, you know, where on, mm. on the internet where I can move to. But, you know, when I call, there's already someone before me that has uh, called. It's like, oh, oops, the room's taken. Mm. Great. Yeah, so I have to be on spot with those. Uh, <laughs> like, keep refreshing. <laughs> the internet page. Yeah. All right. That's what I've been up to. And I've also been... Uh, Binge watching a series called Outlander. It's oh, how good. is that? <laughs> it is really, really good. Yeah. Uh, highly rated, also. So it. Um, yeah. All right. So it's, must, it's, must, on, must, it's on must, my Netflix must, queue. Must I will eventually yeah. get to it. Yeah. So the the short version of the story is there's this uh, woman from the 1940s that has been, um, you know, teleported back in time into. Uh, it's 18th century uh, Scotland and um, and she's trying to alter history with this new lover of hers because she doesn't want her lover to you know something something it, I don't want to spoil much but it's really interesting all right well with that tease who could who could possibly <laughs> not watch <laughs> all right. Ryan what have you been up to who are you playing tell us about um, I am happy because it's a three-day weekend for me, so I get to have a little bit of extra time. Um, don't really have any big plans this weekend because my last several have been pretty busy, but mm -hmm. um, I'm ready to play some D&D &D for my second game today. Just finished one about half an hour ago and ready to play another. I am playing Durgan, the self-hating dwarf who is beardless. Um, he is now also a disciple of the friendly red dragon that lives under... Bergshire. 
I remember said Red Dragon very well. Yes, I remember because you killed me. <laughs> My highest character with that Red Dragon. <laughs> I believe you also killed Krubarb with that dragon <laughs> too, Greg. Everyone's favorite it. NPC. Oh, yes. like Krubarb was there. killed by a fall, by just yeah. being pushed. <laughs> yeah. For, but, but for shits and giggles. Greg's character, which I will always, every time I see you, say, darn you for that. Yes. <laughs> well, we'll language see how many killers, language. Uh, so, um, that brings us to Rob. What are, what are you been up to? Who are you playing? What's going on? So, I'm playing uh, Notch, because um, he still hasn't hit fifth level yet, so he's still got a little life left in him. <laughs> um, he is definitely not a shaved yeti and he's very skilled in the ways of his fellow humans and he is a martial artist because i found that with the skills and powers book you could make a much more overpowered fighter who uses martial arts than an actual monk there you go and I, I'm actually my, very way, happy that you chose to use a martial artist in this in this particular one. That's that's awesome. And my current mood is I'm kind of disappointed. You know, mm -hmm. I, you probably always see me drinking my coffee, and you know, with these long sessions, it gets cold, and it's frustrating. You know, because I, I want to, I'm trying to find a way to keep it warm. And so I was watching Empire Strikes Back the other day, and I thought that's how so i've got this disemboweled freshly killed tauntaun and i thought this will keep my coffee piping hot if i just keep it in there but it turns out that's not the case at all instead of keeping it piping hot it turns out all it does is keep lukewarm oh. <laughs> well done Wow. <laughs> yes. Thank you for that one. All right. Well, I'm glad Rob got to go last because otherwise. <laughs> I mean, you can't um, follow that. All right, Neil, you got anything you want to tell the people before we get going? I'm playing or just Butch. Just say it all in front of Frozen Frontier. No, I'm playing Butch. I can't follow up Rob ever. Um, <laughs> I'm a first level thief. I don't know how I have 19 dexterity. But it says it on my character sheet. Um, so I have, legit. I have 19 decks somehow. Uh, race you. I'm a human. I haven't played this character since I got this cursed goblin mask and a potion of invisibility. Uh, again, I don't know where these things came from. This is a sheet that I've had that's just kind of been sitting there for months. Um, I, don't, I don't know who Butch is, but we're going to find out who he is uh, in game. But he's bald, 5'11". Uh, 157 pounds. I'm sorry, balding. 5'11", 170, 57 pounds. He's, uh... 150 years old? <laughs> Are you sure you're playing a human? I'm, I might be an elf. elf. How? Yeah, <laughs> with 19... 19, uh... You're probably decks, I think an you're an elf. elf. Okay, I'm, yeah. I'm a balding elf who's 150 years old and 5'11 and 157 pounds with milky blue eyes who uses hand axes and daggers <laughs> as weapons. I okay. think that'd be pretty cool if you played a 150-year-old human. <laughs> I'm still an adventurer. Hey, I did... Did I, I ever tell I you about the time I stole the crown jewels? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe my next shenanigans character will be old man Neil, and he won't participate in combat. He'll just say stupid shit and bore you with stories. I, I could get behind that. Anyway, All right. I still no. say there should be like. Nope. Okay. Hmm? Sorry. Didn't mean to cut you off. All right. Let's go. We are going to open the game today as we always do in the bar of shenanigans. Um, oh. Sitting around you, you'll find that the bar is packed with patrons. This is as busy probably as you have ever seen this bar. And they're all clamoring to try this new delicacy that Borscht has just created the other day. It's a meat and cheese pie with this delicious red sauce in it. And it can be made to order with various toppings. It's just the talk of the town, right? This, this place is packed and it has been packed for a couple solid days. Um, but as you sit in here, there is another undercurrent through the town. The mysterious disappearance of a daring reporter for the Daily Walkhearts. 
Um, and she, if you listen, uh, you'll know that her name is April, along with a, a rash of petty thefts and crimes that have kind of sprung up over the last couple of weeks. So uh, this is the scene as the, the five of you, uh, I believe, let me do a quick count. One, two, three, four, five, six. I can count. Uh, the six of you sit along in uh, shenanigans uh, and uh, you found a table, kind of squeezed all together. You, there was no, there's nowhere else to sit. Uh, what are you all doing? What have you been doing throughout the day? I am preaching to my fellow members about the benefits of being aligned with someone such so strong that there is no one that can contest the might of a red dragon. So I, I, I'm telling patrons about this, that red dragons are the most magnificent creatures. They are the apex predator of the wild. Nothing can come close to that. I think Butch keeps readjusting his hood to keep it on his head so that no one sees his ever-expanding, thinning bald spot. Very you don't just go with the comb over? No, no, I don't I don't pull a, a president. I, I just wear a hood, you know, to keep it, keep it tucked. Good choice. So Notch is really excited about this pizza, and he keeps pointing out to anyone who will listen that what makes this food superior as opposed to things you eat with a fork or a spoon is that this food you eat with a fist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how do the rest of you feel as I you're being preached that. about various things? There's the might of red dragons being talked about at this table, as long with fist pizza. The might of red dragons kind of sounds like the typical bravado that you hear in these bars all the time. But this is the greatest, blah, blah, blah. And I think Butch, he's been around the block. He's, he's heard all of this bravado before. So he's just kind of passively rolling his eyes. And, oh, the, the food you eat with a fist is so much better. Passively rolls his eyes. It's fucking food. Just eat it, guys. He doesn't give a shit. He's, these people are just annoying him. Or maybe... Okay. Okay. So can I, I, I'm going to make a grub skill check to see how much I like this pizza. Absolutely, please. Grub skill away. Yeah, yeah maybe you want to feed that to the dragon. A 30. Oh my god, this is the most delicious pizza. Like, you, you are enjoying it. It's greasy, it's savory, it's got a little sweet from some pineapple on it. It is amazing. So it's a proper pizza with pineapple on it. Though. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. It, it yeah. can be ordered with anything you want, but you chose to go with the proper pineapple. And... Pineapple, jalapenos, pepperoni. Yep, perfect. You nailed it. <laughs> Butch will give the pizza a try. Ugh. Okay, since Ugh. everyone's trying it, I think I'll try it as well. Pineapple? Okay. What is this? Oh. With with cheese and meat? You don't put something sweet... Ugh. 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 This Disgusting. is the most amazing thing ever. I shall never eat another thing again. <laughs> if I can have a say I, about I, it. I think Alejandro should have been like, uh, put off by, by, yeah, by fruit. Or uh, warm fruit on like, pizza as well. Like, not really his thing. Ugh. Fair enough. It, 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 just, it, it, it just like takes off like uh, the pineapples from the pizza. It's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> just needs some fixing, and now it's fine. <laughs> you know what I what I think would perfectly complement this fine new dish is oh, maybe is what not what would what would complement this fine new dish is I feel like spring water wouldn't quite work. Maybe not rainwater. I think it needs Mountain Dew to go with it. I think he got hungry. Dew mountain, mountain Dew. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, sadly, sadly, the dew, the freshest dew from the top of the mountain of the Great Horn is a true delicacy and very expensive. Uh, Shenanigans only has a single cast of the dew of the mountain. It is on prominent display near near the top of the bar. Do you guys have any Cheetos? <laughs> Butch calls from the other room. Cheetos? Oh, excellent I've, reference. I've Cheetos, those are... No, those... Those get all over your weapon and turn it orange. Is it the snack that is... Orange is the color of incompetent leadership. <laughs> <laughs> Illuminati nope. confirmed. 
All right. So as you guys are discussing the Cheetos and trying this delicious pizza, you see Desmond with a dark cloud of anger and irritation on his face. It seems quite out of place for a bar that's just as happening as it is. He catches the eyes of a few of you that have been through here before. He recognizes Alejandro, Maximilian. Notch, have you been in this in shenanigans a fair bit? Yes. Four levels. He comes striding to your table. <clears throat> He kind of leans on it with his his hands gripping the edge, and he says, You six, can I ask you to help me with something? It turns out this thing has gone a bit dry. Well, yes, uh, anything for what to happen. Ciabatta would be better. He nods at you and says, If you are going to request special ingredients, you need to talk with borscht. But no, no, this is not to do with the actual pizza itself. Oh, you're not taking rye bread for the crust? If we have it, a borscht will make it. Seems that this particular dish is very uh, easy to put together with whatever you want. Mm. Here's what's going on. I'll just cut straight to the point. I've been, this dish has been so popular, I've been accepting people to order out and have little glib glob deliver it. Uh, it seems somebody has been stealing my pizzas from Glib Glob. The first time, I thought he was just a stupid kobold, and he'd failed to collect the charge and was trying to cover his ass. But the second time, he came back with a bruise. I think somebody has been taking advantage of my help, and this can't be. I'm so angry, but I'm so busy here with the, the bar, I can't go figure this out myself. He's the deal, y'all. Those things need not be mutually exclusive. That he's a terrible kobold and he's covering his ass? And that he's being robbed. They could both be happening. You're not wrong. They both could be true. Here's the deal. If the six of you are willing to figure out who's been filching my pies and beat a little sense into them, or perhaps send them to the stockade, I don't really care which, I will grant all of you a lifetime supply of Borscht's famous flying pies. As it sounds. That's we shall penetrate like this shall shell of you. mystery, no matter how deep it goes, and unmask the villains, however many there may be. Good. Yeah, we will God. not be okay. slow about this. We shall be quick as the rabbit, not slow as the turtle. Have you not heard the story of the tortoise and the hare? In Tortoise and hair pizza sounds pretty good. <laughs> I don't like hair in my pizza. Thing. Poaching tortoises is illegal in Berkshire. Unfortunately, we can't do tortoise. Yes. But what if the tortoise is acquired outside of Berkshire? Then it's okay? Uh, I won't ask questions. Just show it to Borscht. Okay. What if, what if it's kids? Like, perhaps unruly teenagers? I don't think be who are stealing the pizzas. Pizza, really, but... Uh... No, it's probably really not children. It's it's probably large rats. That's always the problem. Big rats, hundreds of them. No, it we seems seem like to have something a that, that before in town. teenagers might do. Mm. This sort of crime, stealing pizza. No, no. I mean, I could imagine kids liking pizza. I mean, it's easy to get, easy to eat, and. Um, but it's a yeah. bar food. Why would kids eat bar food? Hmm. Good point. <laughs> well, where is the little kobold now? I've got him in the back. He's uh, recovering from the, the day's work. If you want to speak with him, I'll send him out to you. All right. Can you please do that? I will. I like your accent. And he turns around and walks <laughs> off. A few moments later, Glib Glob comes like sleepily over to you. He's got a big black eye on one of his eyes. It's kind of hard to tell because he's like already kind of like green and scaly. Uh, but uh, he he wanders up to you. I, you I, put, I take him up and put him on my lap. Oh, come thank on. you, Alejandro. Oh, Glib Glob, you seem to have a new tattoo. <sighs> yeah, it hurts. I ask him and Kobold. So what happened to you, little buddy? Who attacked you? Uh, good God does not know. It was very large shape and long 
gray cloak. It obscured most of him. Took pizzas and I mean, first time Glibglob just came back and told Desmond. Desmond told Glibglob, must be better kobold delivery man. Must protect pizzas and get payment. So I scratched him and he turned around and punched me right in the eye. I hurt mm. bad. So he mm. follows the way of the fist. Were there many or just the one? I just, gl- gl- poor Glibglob only see one. Does everyone speak Cobalt here, or am I not? I'm, the I'm only speaking one that in doesn't... common, hoping that Glibglob speaks. Common. He kind of switches back and forth when he when he when you ask him a question in, in Cobalt, he immediately responds in Cobalt. When you ask in common, he just switches. He's he's like a he just, he just responds in whatever you say. Totally speak Cobalt. <laughs> I <only> speak common. <laughs> Such wow. a good kobold. It's a bi- bilingual and everything. Such a good yeah. kobold. Well, all right. Next time you're sent out to deliver a pizza, we're just going to have to follow you at a distance and see who it is that takes your pizza. Yes. We must stick together, though. We must make sure that we don't get splintered up. <laughs> Did you leave mm, the pizza in the same place both times? Uh, yes. Glib glob near alley. Can you show me where that place is? Mm-hmm. Okay. I will grab my axe and lead gesture for Glib Glob to lead the way. Oh, Glib Glob. Well, going oh, oh, okay. Hold on. We better leave with the pizza so he tries to get it. Well, so it gets stolen again, and then we can actually see who does mm-hmm. it. And Desmond say it. pizza delivery only at night. Glib Glob no go out during day. Except for, for funsies. We've got night shift. Then we go tonight. All who right, to, yeah. Uh, who has the day shift? Uh, day shift Borscht and Desmond. But no delivery, only at night delivery. Mm. I can show you Allie. Go now? Yeah, show me Allie now. Sure. Yes, yes, yes. Follow Glib Glob. I, I put them down. All right. Glibglob, uh, is, you, you set Glibglob down, he, like, ruffles himself and, and begins marching out of shenanigans. I, I have a slice of pizza in my hand as I'm walking. I'm Excellent. Eating, eating, eating. <laughs> wow. Mighty Desmond Day Adventure, now a uh, pizza delivery guy. Ooh, All right. So I think I'll take a pizza to go and I'll put it in my sack with my chickens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to take a slice, and as I eat it, I'm going to fold it in half. Ooh. I like it. I like it. That's how you eat it. You take the corners, and you bend it, and then eat it sideways like that. If this if this was if this was five E, you would definitely get uh, some uh, reward for that. But seeing as we play a real, edition, <laughs> maybe maybe you will get advantage at grub skills. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Neil, you're already doing the music. You're on top of it. Great. Okay, so the the rest of you uh, pile up and follow Glib Glob out of out of the shenanigans. He begins leading you into the into city proper, um, and you know you you go a good ten or fifteen minutes into the like um, not the commercial district, but into the like living quarters of of Berkshire's where the housing is. Um, and it, he kind of comes across this kind of long alleyway between two houses, kind of like where. Maybe, like, this is where people keep their trash and they throw out their urn pots and whatever. And he kind of points. He says, uh, down down this alleyway, uh, it was it came from there and, and then took the pizza as he punches the microphone. Which is only proper. All right. What does it, is there, like, a building, like, right at that point? Yeah, so there's, there's, you're, you're in like a residential district. You're kind of walking down a, a street. Um, you kind of are reaching an alleyway in between kind of like two buildings. Um, the building uh, next to you is kind of a long two-story uh, house uh, that uh, is, is clearly made for residential um, um, purposes. It, it extends down into this alley. Uh, the alleyway kind of connects two streets. If you go to the end of it, uh, there's a there's a second street kind of parallel, and there's multiple. There's you know the second building alongside that. So essentially, there's an alleyway of four long buildings here. Is the alleyway paved? It is uh, cobblestones, but uh, paved. Mm. Um, as you are examining the the pavement. 
Um, what springs to mind here is the recent renovation of a sewer system seems to have been uh, in place in Berkshire, and you do find a manhole cover. Hmm. I will lift open the manhole Ooh. cover and look in. All right, you immediately get a waft of just sewage. It just smells rank. Uh, but you look in, you see a, a dark uh, uh, sewer system. It seems to be about the size of a man. You can stand up in it. There's a little ladder that you can walk down to like not slip and okay. have to jump in. If I look um, like kind of laying on the uh, ground, like poking my head in and looking around. I am a dwarf. What do I see? Okay, yeah, your your eyes pierce the, the, the darkness and uh, you, you see that there's a kind of a, a runnel uh, through the, the center of it and two kind of raised edges. Uh, there's trash and refuse along the edges um, and in the middle of it runs a little bit of running water. You would assume from the, the Berg River, it seems to have been directed down in here to make things run. Um, and you can just see like splops and sewage and refuse kind of running through the runnel. Um, as you peer, please make a perception check for me. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah. My eight perception, which is just amazing. Amazing perception. Yep. I see everything. You, you, you peer around and you are mostly con like convinced that everything you see here looks like normal sewer. Uh, there's refuse along the sides. It kind of looks like trash that is accumulated. Um, random assortments of, of garbage that may have flooded down a storm drain or something. No adolescent martial art turtles anywhere? You don't see any, no. Okay. No. <laughs> I close the manhole cover. Okay. Good God kind of looks at you and says, so... You, you you find bad man? Not yeah. yet, Glib Bob. Where did he go? You should, after you should he be careful you sticking up. your head down there. That looks like you could be many feet down and no doubt connects with the Underdim, a place of great danger. Any I sort of afraid. creature could be down there. I am not afraid of mere things like that. I have strong allies at my back. Not you there guys. could be any like sort of creature down strong. there. Mammals or reptiles or even amphibians. You know, I got the strong feeling we're going to have to be doing a lot of stuff at night. So I think I'm going to go down to the general store and buy a continual light stone. Oh, a continual light stone. Um, sure. You begin uh, searching through the uh, town. Uh, make a charisma check as you look for somebody. You, you ask around looking for somebody that might sell a continual light stone. There, uh, we actually know where there, there five Yeah, goals his last character was selling continual light stones <laughs> somewhere around here. I don't Did know what the Zen price is. set up a shop for it? Although, sort of. It's just Zen the general store. Prison, is it still running? I there could be stones left. I don't Zen. What was the Nick? What was the price that, that your Zen stones were selling for? Like five or ten five gold. Yeah. So I guess it's up to Greg whether or not there are okay, still light yeah. stones. So in the general it, store. it turns out you're in luck, and the, despite the mastermind being in jail, uh, there are still continual light stones for sale at the general store, and you can pick one up for the the standard Zen price. Okay. Actually, I picked one up. Like a while ago, the same time when I got the yeah, I also have and everything. A light stone in my character sheet. So I'm I have a headband and I wanna like mount the stone with maybe some little like leather straps or something on the headband so that I've got this light shining out so that mm -hmm. I can see whatever I need to punch. Okay. How are you gonna mount it to the leather strap? I'll just like tie the rock, the stone onto the um uh, the headband with just some little pieces of leather, some little strips of leather. Okay, sure. Uh, you spend, you know, it, it takes you some time to kind of get that right. Uh, you, you spend some time getting the, the leather strap exactly as you want it, tying it on so it doesn't, you know, do anything weird with the light shining ahead of you. And you make yourself a little miner's cap head light. Anything else the rest of you are doing or are we just waiting until night? I think before night, there are a couple things. Um, at one point, um, Durgan is going to try to pull Glib Glob aside and speak to Glib Glob privately. Um, okay. So Durgan's going to say to Glib Glob, um, do you know where weak humans live alone? 
Uh, weak humans. Uh, uh, Glibglob. Humans much stronger than Glibglob. Uh, weak humans live in, in doctors. In doctor's office. That's where weak humans live. <laughs> Glibglob smart. <laughs> Good job, Glibglob. So I think Durgan realizing that Glibglob is actually not very smart is not going to go to the doctor's office, but he is going to try to find a, a just like a farm or something with like one person out of sure. in errands. And he's going to try to find whatever level zero peasant he can as a level two fighter, knock them out, carry them down, feed it to the dragon, and then come back and meet up with the rest of the party. All right, all right. So uh, this is a fairly easy task for you as a fighter. Uh, there are people like going to be farming, and you can find one. Um, however, they're very rarely just solo by themselves. You, you're seeing groups of these low-level peasants coming together, going to the market, trading their wares, selling their cattle. Um, go ahead and make a perception check. We'll see okay. if you can find a time that like one of them is a little bit alone. Yeah, I'll do one or two. If okay. there's two that are like isolated far enough away that I think I could get both of them. So I don't think I see an opening. You don't really see an opening. No, the, the these these farmers they come in groups. They're pretty they're pretty nonchalant about it. They're in Berkshire. They're not really wary here, but you can tell they do this for protection when they come in from the wilderness, right? Mm -hmm. um, the best uh, you get is you do see two kind of on their own, and they're separated out, but they're in plain sight of the potential marketplace. If you were really sneaky, maybe you could get it done. But I am not sneaky because it I would be tight. Go. So I will, uh, I will not take the opportunity yet. Okay. All right. Eventually they move on and, and your opportunity is lost. Okay. Anything else someone wants to do? Yeah. Butch wants to go get a big stick. He normally just uses axes as his weapon. Um, but this might not be the right battle for an axe. You know, you might not want to kill the person who's stealing the pizzas. You might just want to beat them. So I want to get, like, a big stick. Um, I don't know. Something about, like, you know, five feet long, six feet long. And then while we're waiting, I want to, like, start carving it with different things. Just because he's kind of bored. Um, sure. You know, give, give it some engravings. Make it look a little hokey. And I'll, I'll just give what myself, are you, like, What are you engraving into it? What is Butch's fancy? Uh, I think Butch's fancy is going to be, he's engraving like axes along the side of the stick. He likes the, the axe head. And in fact, he might even start thinking about mounting an axe on the end of his stick. In fact, he's going to do that. He's going to like start tying an axe to the end of his hokey stick and, uh, <laughs> see where it leads him. All right. All right. Do you have some kind of crafting or proficiency in doing this? I have rope use. Okay. Make a rope use check for me. Okay. Um, let's see, d20 plus 16, 27. All right. So after a few hours of work, you, you tie an axe head on there pretty well. You, you swing it around, seems tight, you pull on it. Um, for mechanical, uh, benefit, you can have the, the, um, equip, like the, the, the strength of an axe, right? Mm -hmm. Um, you, the, the weapon speed, the, the damage, uh, but it has a... 10% chance to break anytime it hits or strikes. Okay. I think mostly I'm going to be using the stick, like the blunt end of the stick where the axe head isn't. But occasionally, sure. you know, like, you know, if you need to bar someone, you can use a whole stick or if there's something that needs a, a reach. Sure. You can, you can use it as you will, but you've, you've tied a, a quality axe head on. All right. All right. So anyone else? Or are we going to the evening? I kind of um, wanna like. Um, I'm I'm a bit interested in like the the process of making the pizza. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like, could one uh, could Alejandro actually like try and see if Boris is willing to? Uh, well. Sure. You 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 wander back to Berkshire as as people are fixing headlamps and putting axe heads on things and trying to find people to feed to the dragon. And uh, you you wander back to Boris. Boris is 
busy. He's just like sweat streaming down his face. Desmond's running orders to him. The bar is like turned over. Like the whole new crowd is in here, but it's just as full as it was. Um, how are you? What do you say to him? How are you going to try to get in uh, there? If it's, if it's really busy, perhaps uh, it doesn't really. Could could I perhaps? Um... Dude, like if it's if it's really busy, can I go into like the kitchen? Like uh, maybe they need some help, you know? And like maybe I can like sneak like the glances of the how he's like preparing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. As you as you walk into the kitchen, Borscht kind of like looks up to you mid like dough toss and says, "Are you here to help? If you're not, I need you out of the kitchen." Oh, of course, of course. Like you know, I, I just like you know take take off. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So. Western I need more stuff. fire in the stove over there, and he points to a newly installed, like, big pizza oven made out of stone. You can see there's, like, a fire in the back, and he says, Stoke that up! We need it nice and hot! Also, if you would chop up some more onions, there's some weirdo out there that wants raw onion on his pizza. What the hell? And <laughs> he starts barking orders, so, and, weirdo. and he gets put to work. <laughs> a weirdo. <laughs> no. Yeah, Alrighty. I'll I'll start helping him and like I'll see like how he's like he's tossing up the the dough in the mm -hmm. air like how he's preparing it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, you spend you spend a couple hours helping and uh, you get a pretty good understanding of at least the process of what goes into it. Do you have some kind of proficiency? Uh, with I have cooking? I have a cooking proficiency. Make a cooking proficiency check. <laughs> Keep in mind, I'm not very smart. <laughs> <laughs> but I have a cooking proficiency. Excellent. It's very bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's fine. So you, you, you sit and you and you watch and you have a rudimentary understanding of what goes into this, and you become very adept at helping. But the nuance of making the perfect golden brown crust with the bubbling cheese and perfection just eludes your grasp. You'd probably need to study a little bit more to yeah. be a proficient pizza maker of your own. That's fine. All right. That's awesome. So the rest of you waiting till till evening. Yep. Um, how long does uh, Alejandro? work the kitchen there probably a couple of hours you know he, there's a there's a murder plot going on that takes a few hours the there's some carving of an axe and a tying of it on you make yourself a little lantern all of this takes about an hour or two or three as we as we head towards eve okay uh, when, when he's when he's done when he comes out uh, I say, like, alejandro could i could i speak with you alone of course i just like toss my hair like uh flex my muscle a bit. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not wearing like uh, not wearing uh, anything on my chest. Like it's like yeah. Oh, it's on your chest. Yeah, I'm not wearing anything. Like uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, still, I still have pants. That's okay. Yeah. What do you? What? Uh, what can Alejandro help you with? So you you were helping Porsche to make the pizzas. Yeah. Yeah. Did you learn how to make those? I I've been thinking ah. that perhaps. I want to make a sweet and sour pork pizza, but but I would like to know the secrets. You see, I was thinking of my own with like uh, with the uh, uh, minced meat and green peppers, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Uh, but I see where you're coming from. Uh, I have been helping Bush, but uh, only for a few hours, and uh, didn't quite. Didn't really get the good uh, understanding just yet. I will try in the future. I think we can. Uh, well, I think we can make our, our dreams come true here. Hmm. Yes. Hmm. I would have to get. I would have to get some sort of oven for baking the, the crust. I don't have one of those. All I have is my wok. <clears throat> How much would such a thing cost? I don't know, but anything we want always seems to cost way more than it should in a medieval economy. So mm. I'm expecting that it'd be expensive. I just, I just nod, like understandably. <laughs> and the other, the other problem is is that my my cook shop is is portable, just being a tent. So I would. I would want a portable pizza oven, which doesn't seem <laughs> very portable. Are you saying you want to go, like, sell things on the road? Can Wagon you... pizza? Well, whenever, Wagon. I, whenever I can, I've, I 
here, let me show you. And I'll take you out back and I'll set up. I have a pavilion tent, which oh. is is my portable cook shop. It's it's basically my, my food truck. Your uh, cook so shop you can set it up truck. on the cart and make it an actual food truck. <laughs> I approve of this idea. I like, oh, so you really like to cook as well. And the pizza oven could be moved on the cart. Ah, that makes it some sort of recreational Mobile. vehicle, doesn't it? You know, if you're cooking for, for pleasure on a, a mobile vehicle. Seems more like a food creational vehicle. Yes, mm. you can move it around and sell people food where they are. Yes. Instead of making them come to you. Quite a yes. smart idea there. Hmm. Mm. This, well, this sounds promising. Uh, if we're wanting to buy an oven, I do have some money for it. I, uh, I have a bit be, too. Yeah, I've been as much more bit than busy myself. with uh, teaching yoga as of late, so money has been coming in at a you know a reasonable pace, but yes. you know how I, it goes. I feel we should purchase this today. That the price might be much more reasonable today <laughs> than it would be, say, next week. Perhaps <laughs> later today we will have more money because maybe like, there's a sale for of a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> we tend to make very little money every week. You guys are fucking week, loaded. Like I make more money. I have 13 Neil, gold, Neil. Sparky loaded. 13 gold is like a year's salary for a farmer. Yeah, and everything in the world costs like several hundred, so. I, All right. I, I have 130 gold. Oh see? See? You guys are loaded. Yeah. I'm loaded? 130 gold. Figure. He's rich. You know how many long swords you can buy for that much money? Not many. And how many pizza ovens? They're like 15 gold <laughs> each. Yeah, you can buy a lot of long swords, man. You're... I can't buy one. You can't buy a suit of plate armor. Well, you shouldn't. That's that's like mail. a key. Oh, plate mail is only available to the, the wealthiest of the wealthy. God. All right. So as you as you have this, this discussion of pizza ovens and their cost and the relative wealth of the poor peasants that must work for their <laughs> coin instead of adventuring gallantly as you do um the the sun begins kind of going into that that evening um sunset reds and oranges hue across the sky um and good glob shows back up uh at uh, the the door of of shenanigans and he's the like, glib glob almost ready to report you you guys uh uh gonna gonna protect glib glob tonight yes that's Why right yeah yes yeah, so let me just feed my chickens first <laughs> Oh, okay, Glibglob needs to get pizza orders, and then Glibglob will will be ready. Yeah, feed chickens soon. Okay, I'll I'll go out in the yard and feed my chickens. All right. <laughs> Do you feed them with the pizza? No, that would be silly, and not not until I invent a a chicken feed pizza, which okay. is on my list. <laughs> Excellent. So you feed your you feed your chickens. Uh, Good Glob gets a comically oversized amount of orders. He has them like strapped to his back with boxes piled high that say "Borst's Flying Pie," and uh, you uh, you see him kind of struggling out with his backpack of pizzas that is twice as tall as him. He says, "Okay, Good Glob, ready." I think uh, whatever the top box is or something, the top pizza. Um, Durgan is going to, that's balancing, he's going to act like he's studying it, and he's going to slip off the top pie without trying, like, while Glibglob's looking the other direction. All right, so you can clearly get it off of Glibglob. Glibglob okay. is not the challenge here. However, you're in the middle of shenanigans, and Desmond... I, I, I'm doing this when we step outside. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, you you sneakily take the top pizza off the box off the yeah. top. I, I'm gonna take a slice and then pass the box to the other party members. <laughs> we See have want it or not. Hmm. I brought some with what? me. I I pat my chicken bag. W what type of pizza was it that I grabbed? Uh, the the top box. Uh, well, let me roll my my dice of pizza. Pizza dice. Uh, this one is plain cheese. Okay. 
Oh, Thank that's, that's not really pizza. That's a boring pizza. That's yeah, like, that. you know, it's like a nice bread. <laughs> very plain guy, but I'll probably order that. Yeah. So yeah, the- I, I have a I have a slice of that, and I offer the slices to the rest of the party. If they don't take it, then I put it back well, with the slice l- missing. Uh, well, our, at least that's for two I think. wizards I think here. Do you have familiars? No, I heard tales about familiars. They are very bad if they get killed. They're bad for your health if they They're die. They're very bad for your health, you know. You get the uh, insane uh, trying to keep them safe, you know. It's it's something that's uh, mentally challenging for a wizard to, you know, keep up. I see. I was just thinking that if, if for somehow the pizzas were stolen, despite our protection, if we had some way to track the pizza. Pizza Lojack. To... Well, let me see. Yes. Do I have the ability to locate pizzas? Does anyone have a locate object spell? My my people Ooh, I use do, it. But I have to we have to wait until the morning. <laughs> mm. Perhaps you should rest now so we, you can cast it tonight. Hmm. Uh, I night? guess is it already night or is like, it? Blue Bob's getting ready to go, right? So, oh, okay. I, well, fear yeah, that, yeah. I fear that we don't have time. If our plan A doesn't work, this will do for plan B. Very well. Yes. So I think the, the, the pizza uh, is kept in the pizza box, right? The 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 top pizza is missing a slice. Okay. Perfect. I uh, think I'm, only one. I think only one, unless someone else took a slice. Butch didn't really like the pizza, but he's gonna go on this mission because he's a, he's a good man. He wants to be getting good with with Desmond, but he wants to try and strike a deal with him instead. So he wants, he wants Butch, all that stuff. Butch wants to go find Desmond and see if he can't negotiate a, a side deal. All right. Uh, yes, yeah, just out of curiosity, were we offered any recompense? Unlimited pizza. Ah. Uh, yeah. Desmond is, is busily taking pizza. orders and like, whatnot you know, at the bar. Yeah. Desmond, we, we're going to do this job for you. <clears throat> yes. Adjusting his hood so his bald spot isn't showing. Uh, but I don't really like the pizza. So I'm willing to do it, but I would like something else in exchange instead of the, the deal you offered me. I'm listening. I've been really jonesing for a case of beer. Is that something you could set me up with instead? He scratches his chin. A single case? A couple cases. A single case, whatever. A single case. A, a single, single case. case of Dwarven Stout. Sounds good. Excellent. Done. Okay. I'm on board. And with that, oh. why don't we go to our first break? Oh. No, he's back. That okay. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. My Zoom just reset. Are we okay? We're good. Yeah. Okay. We're taking right. a break. Oh, we could take a break. Whatever. Oh, DM's call. Uh, I we're we're pretty close to a break time. This this works just as good as Perfect. any. I was gonna set up a little cliffhanger, but this works. All right, we'll take a break. <laughs> See you guys in a few minutes. Bye bye. <laughs>